Robert Parson, thank you very much for joining us on Trade Finance Talk TV. Delighted to be here. So here we are, X Credit International 2020, lots going on, but for our audience who may not know you already, who are you, where are you from, and what do you do? I'm a partner at the international law firm Clyde & Co. Uh, I head up the trade and commodity finance team there. Uh, so I'm here with colleagues uh, at this event, which is really a fantastic event this year. Uh, and so we're covering uh, the full breadth of people who are involved in financing in the trade and commodity market, uh, financial institutions, funds, uh, increasingly we're seeing insurers and other uh, alternative funders uh, in there as well. So very exciting times and of course uh, a number of interesting issues to, to grapple with at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So let's jump straight into it and talk about these issues. What are the key issues for you in trade finance in 2020 so far? I, I think one of the things which is I, I'm particularly interested in is the way that uh, trade finance is developed as an asset class uh, for distribution. Uh, there's a really important role that people involved in distributing trade assets play in the production of liquidity generally. We all know that through a, a number of issues, the both with Baal II and Baal III, uh, tightening the way that uh, lenders approach this market, despite the very, very good uh, default uh, um, uh, ratios that we see in trade finance as a product. I think one of the, one of the, the, the unsung uh, heroes, really, of, of asset classes uh, are trade finance assets. Uh, um, we've seen how the financial crisis uh, various other events have affected and of course Brexit in the UK uh, have, have, put, have put some dampeners uh, on the way that, uh, that, that uh, financiers have approached this market. However, the, that squeezing of financial institution liquidity really needs to be unsqueezed by the production of trade assets which we sold down into other funders uh, producing more ability to go in and fund, uh, where banks, of course, play a very important role uh, in providing that, both from, uh, from general trade finance instruments and other services, which many of the other funders can't do uh, in the front line. So that's re a really important part, I think, of, of what uh, needs to be done. Uh, and I think the thing we, we hear time and time again is that there are a lack of those uh, uh, trade assets. And so really you, you have a, uh, an, an interesting uh, issue here as to whether uh, banks and others can be, get, can be persuaded to go out, produce those assets, even though they're not going to be able to retain them themselves because they don't have the liquidity and the capacity, uh, and how those are then fed down through the system. So that's, that's certainly, I think, one of the very interesting issues uh, over the next year or two. And of course, compounded by uh, a, a number of other issues, which I'm sure we'll get onto. Yeah. Well, I guess touching back onto those assets and the generation of those assets, can technology have a role here to play in generating those? I, I think it definitely can. I think uh, we, we've, the, it's true to say, and I, I, I frequently go to conferences and see presentations uh, of different uh, products. Uh, there are a lot of uh, products out there, both obviously just with ledger uh, products, blockchain, non-blockchain products. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the important thing here is to, is to say that I, I think probably not all of those products can survive. There's going to have to be some consolidation around standards mm -hmm. in particular to make sure that we are producing products which can be widely available uh, in, in the market. Uh, I think technology can play a very important part in uh, reducing costs and also, of course, enabling uh, governance, due diligence, reducing fraud, other, other parts of this business, which have frequently been an issue uh, for people going particularly into the, the receivables finance business. Yeah. So I think technology has a really important part to play. Yeah, great. So Robert, let's talk about one of the issues that is that is obviously seeming to become more and more of an issue as each day goes past coronavirus. And I think it would be remiss of me not to ask you on your thoughts in terms of the impacts that COVID-19 is potentially going to have or could have on global supply chains, but particularly around shorter term of trade finance. Yeah, it's been very interesting going around today. I've seen very few handshakes going on <laughs> uh, at the conference. Plenty of, plenty of Wuhan shape going on, as you'd expect. Um, I, th I think quite apart from the effect it's having on everyone's personal uh, and, and obviously tragically uh, very serious uh, effects in certain parts of the world, but also on uh, people's business activities, lack of ability to travel, whether that's within Europe or further afield. Um, uh, I think one of the key 
factors that we're going to see, not perhaps in the immediate next week or two, but over a period of time, uh, are the knock-on effects of a very sharp fall in Chinese production. And, and we've seen a number of figures come out over the last few days which have yeah. suggested that the, 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 the sort of cliff edge dive that Chinese production has taken uh, during this crisis uh, is going to be far more serious than the financial crisis, than SARS and, and other uh, incidents over the years. And we're going to see that affecting, of course, supply chains uh, globally, uh, of, of course, you know, Chinese growth, we're seeing sh shrinking back to well under 5%. Uh, that's going to have a material effect on the growth uh, in other economies. Uh, I think the supply chain uh, issue will see immediately problems uh, in some of the tier two to tier three, four uh, traders, suppliers, who are either going to have problems performing uh, or ultimately problems, of course, uh, with their own liquidity. So. We will see some failures. Uh, of course, uh, we've seen recently, even before the uh, coronavirus uh, uh, started to, to have its effect, uh, one or two major uh, in, insolvencies, one out of Singapore in the agribusiness, uh, which has been a subject of a lot of speculation. Uh, so I think we'll see there's a potential, of course, uh, for a knee-jerk reaction uh, from, from lenders, yeah. from banks. Uh, we hope that doesn't happen. Uh, if it does, uh, is the slack going to be taken up from elsewhere? That's going to be one of the key things uh, for, for whether trade and trade finance can be can be kept on the rails. Great. Robert, thank you very much for joining us on Trade Finance Talks TV. It's been very insightful and uh, we'll see you soon. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.